Pisces, welcome to your end of May 2021 general tarot update. It's Raina here. And um, the big news uh, astrologically is that we're having a total lunar eclipse on May 26th at 5 degrees of Sag. And um, this for you is falling in your 10th house of career. So that is really exciting because um, there's this sense of maybe a breakthrough with your career. Um, for some people, this can be letting go of a career that maybe you have clung to, even though it never really resonated with you or something along those lines. Um, usually with eclipses, with uh, you know, it's about change, but with lunar eclipses, it can be letting go or something... Um, you know, leaving your life, but, but, you know, I read so many different things and just thinking about what full moons mean, and this is like a very powerful full moon. I mean, it really is more about, uh, to me, manifestation more than anything else. I mean, that's how I see it. I don't know if <laughs> I'm making things up or what, but I like to see it that way because when you talk about losses, even if it's something that somebody doesn't want, I mean, if it's, if, if it's something that people, you know, don't really want, then I guess it's a good thing, but it still can feel very, uh, uncomfortable. So I like to frame it differently, but it can have some of the same effects. And by the way, I just noticed I have a bunch of ashes from my, uh, sage that I'm going to be washing my cloth probably today. So if, if you see any of these, uh, particles of sage, I apologize, but, uh, I do like to use it. Whoa. <laughs> it almost fell over. Wow. This is really, I'm going to pick an additional card, but it's like treachery in love, perhaps. I don't know if it has to be love. The lover's card doesn't have to be about love, but um, let me bring in the past position. The past position is the Knight of Wands. If this is another person, it can be someone who is like a playboy type of guy. Um, yes, this can be a younger man, but in some cases, an older man who's never grown up, I mean, it, I'm, I'm characterizing it in a negative way. This can be somebody who's very youthful and just very independent, but the Lothar, Lothario type in some cases, because, you know, they might be very, um, like a player, they can't commit for some reason, or they just like their freedom, probably. But see, here's the centerpiece, the, the high priestess. And this is the card of like knowing that something is going on um, beneath the surface or sensing it. It might just be like a psychic thing. As soon as I picked this card, I was thinking more of like, I was like, oh, that's perfect for Pisces. Pisces is so intuitive. But sometimes even an intuitive person, they can only get those hits, those intuitive hits that are like to their gut, like, oh yeah, something is definitely up, but you might not be able to put your finger on it. The higher message is the five of swords. This can be that somebody is lying. Uh, specifically, I say lying because the number five connects with Mercury and the swords, like a Gemini negative influence, that type of person, Mercury, Mercurial, who you see people in the background. I mean, it could be like, you know, kind of like um, mischaracterizing you to other people. So typically I think of a relationship because I have the lover's card, which is actually connected to Gemini. So in the challenge position, it can show that this person is not on your side and is actually two-faced maybe 
Um, but regardless of what um, it means altogether, you hold the key. So the five of uh, swords is really about you understanding that somebody could be doing this. And you may have like some of these signs that something is going on, but you choose not to see the, the full picture. You allow yourself to be in denial and that's on you. That's like a, a defense mechanism of Pisces, people with a prominent Pisces is, is that, oh no, uh, that's not what, what's really going on. And then creating an alternative narrative, but is it the truth or is it, are you lying to yourself? The high priestess knows the high priestess, um, has a deeper knowledge The you know, they always say that the, the psychic person, a lot of times they cannot see their own stuff because of that subjectivity. They can, they can be very clear, uh, buoyant or clear sentient, whatever you want to call it. But, um, when it comes to themselves, they have a blind spot. And, um, the other thing about the lover's card in the challenge position, cause this is, um, symbolic of the choice. And it's to let you know that you always have a choice. Sometimes Pisces people don't believe that they have a choice. They believe that everything is predetermined and they are victims of fate. And it's a very complex issue because they're right as much as they're wrong. I think I'm always revising my, my, uh, life philosophy or my understanding of, you know, what's going on. My current belief is that we are creating our reality a hundred percent. Uh, but that some of it we have preordained, you know, that we have planned before we were, we came here, we incarnated, but it was still us choosing these events, these things, these people that we're meeting, all of that. But there's still, it's like the coloring book. The coloring book has, um, these figures that are outlines and we get to color in, in this incarnation, those outlines. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like if you're a woman and you just want so much to be a model and you're five foot two and it just even like modeling for, um, a local store, they wouldn't take you because they only take certain heights or whatever. Let's say you're five feet or four, nine or something like that. Or you want to be a basketball player and you're only, you know, five feet tall and it just wouldn't happen. They just wouldn't take you. Does that mean you just say screw it and you never exercise or you never, um, do things that are in the same vein? You, you still can have a beautiful life and you still can do things that uh, really interest you that follow the same course of the thing that you're interested in. You might not have that exact um, outcome that you're looking for, but you don't have to chuck it all. And, and that's where it gets tricky because fatalism or the belief that everything is preordained can, can make a person be all or nothing. Oh, I can't have, I can't sell a million record albums. Okay, then screw it. I'll never play my guitar. Or I'll never, you know, I can't be like this famous musician, this famous whatever. I mean, that's, that, that would have probably been a better example than a model. Model is kind of a weird example, but like a musician, um, people do that for fun all the time and they really identify themselves as that. I was just watching this other video that's um, talking about um, these kinds of choices in life. And this young woman was saying that, you know, in, and she, but she seems like she's American, but she was saying that in Europe, um, <clears throat> when you talk to people and say, what, what are you, you know, who are you? Or like, you know, trying to get what they do for a living and all that stuff. They list, sometimes they'll list their hobbies before they talk about what they do for a living because the, you know, your profession is not like the end all be all. 
And I, you know, I don't know exactly why that's the case. It could be because a lot of people work for the government and they don't like their jobs. I mean, you know, it, it, we don't know the devil is in the details, right? So I don't know, um, if, are, are there a lot of entrepreneurs in, in, uh, Paris? in some of these countries, um, that have, um, a socialist philosophy. I know that they're not, uh, you know, communists, but, uh, I don't know how many have their own businesses. It's not like a free market capitalism, I don't think. Um, so in, in Denmark or Norway, I, I wonder if most people work for the state. And in that case, they may not really be that, in love with their jobs, but they have a very good standard of living. And so they're free to pursue, um, things that really matter to them personally. So, and by the way, I'm not, you know, putting down that system. I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, looking deeper. So I'm, I'm asking you if you, um, can look at your life Pisces in a more, um, open-ended way in a, in a way that is more self-empowering in everything that you do. Because you know what, as I was talking, I was like, uh Oh, what was I talking about? Why am I even bringing this up? I'm starting to talk about, you know, uh, <laughs> economic systems of the world. And I realized it's because everything is connected and how you view life. I, I believe really, uh, determines your outcome. So with this card of what's coming in, the Nine of Swords, um, this is really an example of that. This is a card of anxiety. And the swords relate to all of the air signs too. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Again, you know, I got that lover's card. There's just Gemini. And I feel like the Five of Swords, I'm not sure if I'm correct, is, is Gemini. But the bottom line is that thoughts... Are, are things that can, um, uh, you know, be, be our worst, um, enemies. You know, we, sometimes we think that if, that, that if we think a thought, it's, it's true and it can be totally false. You know, our thoughts are not necessarily our, um, uh, our friend and we have to learn how to discern between thoughts because this anxiety that you may be experiencing may be um, false things that you're telling yourself. If somebody is, you know, smearing you so that they can have some sort of control over you, you don't have to worry about whether other people will believe it. Because the truth is that if somebody really knows you and really cares about you, you think they're going to believe the worst about you? The only people that would believe that are the people who want to believe it. They're looking for an excuse to believe it. And you do not need people like that in your life to begin with. So be happy that you can weed out people that are not um, on your side. And that's the way to flip anxiety is to, to look at the, the gift that, it's, that whatever the situation is, is bringing you. If you feel like something in the pit of your stomach and someone that you are involved with is, you feel doing that, you know, uh, triggering that within you, rather than just like blame them, say to yourself, what, what is, you know, what am I like fearing? If you're afraid that somebody's cheating on you, um, then you may have other examples where there are signs that the person is, and perhaps you've been turning a blind eye. So, you know, that has to be, um, looked at, um, not to like, just look away from it. The outcome, another swords, page of swords. This is a card. This is the spy card. This is like staying on high alert. Um, when I, I kind of laughed, you know, when I got, not necessarily the nine of swords, but when I got the page of swords, the five and, 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 and the high priestess and this guy, because this guy, um, can create that sort of 
anxiety because it triggers within you that feeling of insecurity. That's really what that's all about, is that feeling like you're not good enough for somebody to be faithful to you. And these can be old tapes that are just coming to, to pass once again. And you may say to yourself, Pisces, why does this always happen to me? Why do I always have this person who is, um, you know, cheating on me and lying to me? You know, why can't I have what the lovers represent? Why can't I have that? Well, one of the things that the lovers, even though those people are naked on the lover's card, it's really about, um, um, you know, intimacy of an emotional variety as far as I'm concerned. And that means that you are not um, um, being secretive about your emotions or about your past that you, that you can really reveal to another person what you've been through. And a lot of Pisces have been through a lot of stuff. So it's not like something is like you don't have anything to talk about, like you're a boring person. Chances are more than likely that you have gone through a few things that have been very challenging. So be, having somebody in your life that you can do that with and you don't feel like they're going to exploit it, that they're going to throw it back in your face when you have an argument or something like that. Um, and not being, what I'm saying is not being afraid. Yeah, I mean, the possibility is always there. Sometimes people do shitty things in life. And, you know, it's our job to be strong enough to risk that possibility and still be open and still be trusting. Of course, to the right person, you have to have discernment. Outcome, Knight of Pentacles, this is the workhorse card. This is associated with Taurus. If you have a Taurus person around you who really um, is making overtures or they seem like interested and you are kind of going towards the bad boys, the, the, the Knight of Wands types. Um, this, the Knight of Wands is actually connected to Sag. I connect it to Aries, but it's fire energy for sure. And that sense of, um, very sexy, very, um, charismatic, but not necessarily very stable. Kind of, there's an instability with the Knight of Wands, there's a total stability with the Knight of Pentacles. But are you, Pisces, attracted to um, that sort of energy? Or are you attracted to chaos? This is a very important thing. The, the, the swords represent drama and, and strife. And sad to say, some people who go through traumatic experiences, they... Um, recreate them in their life because it's so familiar to them. So this is where it's on you to kind of like determine what, what you're doing, like what your um, reasoning is in order to, um, you know, make something happen. So in any case, that's what I have for you, Pisces. I hope that you resonated with this. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care.